If you've spent any amount of time here on the Yamanube channel in the last couple of months, you know that we've been dunking all over this miserable little Gixxer 250. And you might start thinking, these guys just hate 250cc motorcycles, and my uncle said I needed to start on one so I could be safe, so why do they keep making fun of it? Well, today, we're gonna prove to you and show to you that not all 250s are made the same. In fact, you can get yourself a very peppy and fun 250cc motorcycle that will outclass the Gixxer 250 in just about every way. So today, we're going to take a look at how not all 250cc motorcycles are made the same and why they still deserve your consideration. Stick around. Alrighty guys, I just spent the last 40 minutes riding this thing into the location here today and it was a miserable experience. I couldn't even begin to have fun on this motorcycle as an experienced motorcyclist because it's just so slow. This 249cc parallel twin is only putting down 24 horsepower and 17 foot-pounds of torque, which puts it at the bottom of the barrel of all the beginner bikes out there. It really is one of the slowest choices, and that's down to its crazy high wet weight. This thing is almost 400 pounds compared to something like the Duke 390, which is in the low 330s or 340s. That is a huge difference in weight, especially when you're talking about motors that are putting down this little weight. But you might be thinking to yourself, hey, Spite, this thing sounds like a great beginner bike. You know, low speed, I'm not gonna get myself into trouble. And you know, it's got a low seat height, 31.3 inches. I can flat foot that, no problem. Well, while that does seem like a good idea on the spec sheet, this thing has the Grom effect, where when you go up a hill, you can pin it all the way at redline and watch the RPMs just dip and you slow down as you go up the hill. This thing does not have enough power to keep up on any highway and it can actually be more dangerous as opposed to something like the Ninja 400, where you can just ride that no problem without having to worry about passing cars. Let's take a look at the WR250 though and see how a 250 can actually be fun. Now when it comes to 250cc motorcycles, I personally think that this WR250 from Yamaha is one of the apex predators of 250ccs. Why do I say that? Well, it's got a lot of really cool features that make it stand out as a beginner bike. It features a 249cc single putting down 30 horsepower and 18 foot-pounds of torque. Now you might think that it's only a little bit more than the Gixxer, but this thing weighs only 310 pounds wet and ready to ride, which is 90 pounds less than the Gixxer 250, which is going to make a huge difference in terms of its flickability and overall handleability as well. One of the big things about the WR that kind of turns people off is the seat height. This thing has a 36.6 inch seat height. And you might think that is insane. That is so tall, there's no way I can ride this thing. However, because it's so lightweight and because it sags a little bit when you step on it, I have a 32 inch inseam. If I swing a leg over this machine, I can easily put my foot down right over here and balance myself on this motorcycle, no problem, because it is so lightweight. Now, you might be wondering, what the hell even is this motorcycle doing on the Yammy Noob channel? Well, if you've seen our reveal of the Triumph Trident, you'd know that I purchased this thing as a giveaway bike and then promptly looped it in a parking lot, and now it's kind of my motorcycle. So if you hit the link down below, you can join on yammynoob.co, get entered to win that Triumph Trident and a $6,000 cash prize in place of this WR so you can get yourself a beginner bike. But enough jibber jabber, let's see how these motorcycles feel on the road and see if there's any real difference between the two when the going gets twisty. All right, everyone, it's all about the little bikes today. We are aboard two of the most patrician 250cc bikes. One is the Me Machine Gixxer 250, the other is a pretty rad WR250. Now, Spite, you have not had this much seat time on the Gixxer, I think, ever. So, um, why don't you tell me how you're feeling on it and just give me some impressions of the bike? Uh, the first thing I have to say is that I'm feeling a little sad. This is, <laughs> this is kind of ruining my Wednesday, spending this much time on the Gixxer. Don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna swap so we get your impressions on a real bike. But, uh, yeah, so I, I think for a lot of folks, they might be similarly sized to you. You know, you're 6'4", 200 something pounds, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and I think you are too big for that bike in, in more ways than one, right? Yeah, I mean, this this motorcycle is, I would call it dangerously slow. Um, it's it's one of those bikes where, like, here guys, watch watch my speedo while I do this, and watch me in relationship to Yam here. I'm gonna go down a gear, mid gear, basically at the top of the power band, tuck in, and go. Eh, full throttle. 
Yeah, you're, you're not really coming up close to me. <laughs> now you are. <laughs> I mean, that's that's abysmal. That's really abysmal. Um, you have to think so carefully when you're riding this motorcycle about the maneuvers that you're going to make because you end up making them like a quarter mile in advance because you have to build up speed to do it. Like the, uh, going... the Jixxer 250's engine and throttle is the epitome of, I'm not here for a good time, I'm here for a long time, you know? Yeah. It's definitely optimizing for long rather than good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even even with a quick turn throttle, uh, it's not I gonna help. It, it'll ensure that you, maybe you'll rev it up a little bit quicker, but <laughs> with a with a quick turn throttle, the disappointment is just gonna happen faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the kind of motorcycle where you hop on the throttle and you you know you you know that feeling when you get on a bike and it kind of like pushes you through. It, it feels like yeah. the rear tires spinning the world and yeah. nothing, like the world is turning underneath you. This literally just feels like. Uh, you turn the throttle and then eventually you start moving yeah now we can sit here and dunk on the jigsaw all day but one thing i want to point out is we had a ninja 400 we did as a giveaway bike about a year and a half ago and it's not to say that you just hate all little bikes because i remember you liked the ninja 400 quite a bit right oh the ninja 400 was a ball it was a ton of fun yeah uh, it's crazy how much lower weight and a little bit more power out of that engine really improves the riding experience. I mean, there's nothing the Ninja 400 can't do, really. It's it's a really well set up motorcycle, and this is just an aberration in the beginner bike marketplace. <laughs> it's it's an atrocity against God. <laughs> it really is. Right in the face of God himself is just Suzuki plopping the Jixxer 250 and just like here you go. And he's like, what have you what what hateful fury have you wrought against me? You know. <laughs> And I guess the only thing that this motorcycle has going for it is that it's cheap-ish. You can yeah. get it for like four grand. Whereas that is this is this is bucks. sixty-six, I think, which is quite a bit more. And they don't make them anymore. And used WRs kind of just sit at five thousand dollars no matter what. So it's it's kind of frustrating in that way. Like, how does it feel to ride a bike that's actually fun? Yeah, so the WR, it kind of falls along the Ninja 400 route where it's a lot less weight and just a little bit more power. And because you've got this uh, single cylinder engine, it makes it pretty dang punchy, man. Like this is a punchy, fun motorcycle that I think anyone could really get down with, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a bit of a shame that people don't think about dual sports more often because a little single cylinder engine like that, not only is it cheap to run and maintain over the life of the motorcycle, but they just produce power in a more enjoyable way. Yeah, it really snaps on the power really well. And, you know, one thing that I was thinking of that's really cool about the WR versus the Jixxer is, uh, you know, if you're coming from like bicycles or you're coming from something uh, a little bit more like traditional like that, you know, one of the reasons that people don't like drop bar bicycles is because the ergonomics are kind of weird. And dual sports, in my opinion, have one of the most kind of standard, easy to understand ergonomic packages of almost any bike. This is super intuitive and easy to, to ride. You got the bars nice and high. You've got tons of leverage over the bike. It, it feels like you can place this thing anywhere you want. And honestly, I feel like I could keep up with the Jixxer basically anywhere and beyond because I can actually go off road with this thing where Although we take the Jixxer off-road a bunch, and we have said that it's a surprising little scrambler, uh, it's not a bike that you're going to be able to take off-road and learn off-road with either. So I just feel like the WR, despite it being a 250, gives you so much more over something like the Jixxer, and is just a lot more fun to ride. Like, you and I are both plenty experienced motorcyclists. Uh, you know, I've got plenty of track and race experience. You've done your off-road days. You've owned a bunch of bikes. And yet we always come back to these small displacement dual sports as one of our favorite kind of spots in motorcycling, right? Like you love your DRZ. Oh man, yeah. I, I bemoan how it doesn't work all the time, but, but we're working <laughs> on that. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, it, the engine is so usable. All of the power is so usable. Uh -huh. And I, I actually just put out a vlog about how singles are my favorite engine style for street riding out of all of them. 
Yeah, look, you know? look at this guy plugging his own video. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it to him. <laughs> but I really do think that these small parallel twins, I mean, they're just so ubiquitous and, and you really are doing yourself a disservice by getting this because it's a sport bike over that because it's an ugly dual sport. Yeah. I I still maintain this, that if Yamaha made a WR300R that looked more modern, had like a cool LED circle headlight, it, it looked kind of like my Ducati Scrambler's headlight, you know, still had the cool plastics and stuff, I think they'd sell the crap out of them, man, but I don't know, maybe they know something I don't about the dual sport market. What do you say to a little roll-on here? I would love to. I was actually just about to say, what gear do you want to pick? Let's go from third gear. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Jixer! <Bye. laughs> Go! <laughs> Holy moly, I super skywalked you. <laughs> Holy that was crap! A, that was abysmal. <laughs> yeah, and, and I saw actually earlier on Google, one of the most common things that people say is, is the WR250R fast enough? And uh, it just absolutely annihilated the Jixer 250. <laughs> so I think it's fast enough. Um, one thing that's really cool about the WR is it's geared much more aggressively than the Jixer. So first gear mm -hmm. ends at like 12 miles per hour, I think, like it's insane. So you're gonna get a lot more snap out of the hole with this thing versus the Jixer. And this engine makes a lot more top end power, which is weird to say out of a dual sport, but it really does. You can rev the nuts off this WR. I mean, it's just a more fun motorcycle through and through. Uh, it's it's not got the most interesting engine note, but neither does this. Yeah. And it really, you just gotta go give one a try. I know that I know they look funny. I know the seat height seems tall, and and you know, like it might uh, turn you off the motorcycle a little bit. But really, you owe it to yourself to give that 250 a try. Absolutely. So with all that being said, do you want to swap and get back on a real bike? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> I really want to get off the Jixer 250 now. I think you see me every time we leave a stoplight. I'm always banging little wheelies on this thing, sliding it around, mm -hmm. chucking it off-road anywhere. It's such a fun bike. And the fact that a 250 can entertain an experienced rider says a lot about the bike, I would say. Whereas this one is just absolutely miserable to an experienced rider. Yeah. Hold on, you didn't even do the ceremonious thing with the Jixer. Come on, little bastard. I don't know why it still works. And I turn it off. <laughs> oh, this is so much nicer being up on a nice tall motorcycle. Yeah. Go so this is me on my tippy toes. Yeah, and then... Oh, yeah, that's like a good three inches just boop, just lower. Mm -hmm. So... If you are more spite sized, don't worry about the seat height because it actually comes down quite a bit on a WR. I think the one thing the Jixer has over the WR250 is the dash. <laughs> yeah, you do get more information. I got a gear position indicator, an actual fuel gauge. That's quite nice. Oh, yeah. This is so much better. <laughs> I can hear it through the Gardo just hanging off the limiter. <laughs> ah, that's enough. Now I have time to grab fourth. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, jumping aboard the Jixer 250 versus the WR, yeah, these, these bikes are not in the same category, so the experience is completely different. You know, this is much more sport bike. It's way lower, way smaller. Um, but even me at about 5 foot 11, 170 pounds, 31, 32 inch inseam, I can't remember exactly. I'm cramped on this thing, man. It's a tiny bike. Yeah, it's, it's really too small. small. I mean, we were joking earlier, but the Jixer's windshield doesn't even come up to the seat height on the WR. That's how, no. that's how diminutive this bike is. And I sit up on this, I'm in a really comfortable, nice upright position. I feel like I'm sitting in a chair. Uh, it's not feeling crazy vibrational like you might be worried about from a single cylinder engine. And, you know, I've still got plenty of power to just go. You know, I, I'm sitting here at full throttle but I don't feel like I'm waiting for things to happen. Oh, do you want to redo the race? Sure, why not? Let me right. slow down here for yeah. you. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do second gear. Second all right. gear, all right. Two, one. Oh, even with my weight advantage, I mean, you're, 
The WR is right there, man. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Only, it, only now am I actually catching up and passing a little bit. I think that's where, you know, uh, aerodynamics is actually starting to kick in. Yeah, because you start being a sail in the wind. I love dual sports, man. They're so much fun, especially just being able to stand up on them and... Again, I just, I just think that they provide a wider breadth of motorcycling experience. And to a beginner rider, um, you know, again, that seat height might seem a little unapproachable, but it's not that bad because you can do a lot with it. To And it's also really narrow, too. So when you're on the bike, your, knee, your legs actually go out really far, too, because they're not spread out as wide. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the most natural ergonomic setups on a motorcycle. Uh, yeah. I can't think of one that's more chilled out and comfortable. Even even some cruisers can feel a little funny because you have your feet like up here. But this is this is literally like I'm just sitting in a chair. And side to side, even though we're on these kind of like semi knobbly, you know, road biased off-road tires, they feel fine as you're moving it through a corner. Yeah, there's a little bit of shimmy and shake out of them, but you're still going to be able to keep up with anybody on a sport bike on a road because there's speed limits. Well, I don't know if you'll keep up with any sport bike on the road. I mean, if, if someone's on like a, you know, an MT-09 or a Tuono and they're really ripping it, you're, you're just not going to keep up with an, with, an, with a WR. But to your point, if you're being a reasonable human being, you will definitely keep up. You, you can go on a group ride just fine in a WR. You can't do the massive highway pulls that your buddies are doing, but honestly, you'll probably want to bop around on a forest road way more than doing that anyway, so. Yeah. Oh, God, there's no torque up that hill. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I watch your hand go all the way to full throttle and just nothing happens. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Trying to drive off the apex and it's stuck. <laughs> Uh, I feel like the story with the Jixer is you just need to carry as much corner speed as possible. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get out. Even then, sometimes it's not enough. I remember at Harris Hill when I took this thing on track, uh, there were literally corners where I was picking limiter in sixth and being like, that's all it has. I, I, I can't go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hilariously bad, honestly, compared to your R3s and your Ninja 400s. It's difficult to make the case for this 250. I think if you're looking at a small sport bike, don't look at a 250cc. I don't think it makes sense nowadays. Look at a Ninja 400, look at an R3, look at a Duke 390. Those are genuinely fun and good motorcycles. If you if you are very gung-ho about the 250cc life, you should just get a dual sport. Get a KLX 300, get a WR250. Uh, what, what do you think about that, Spite? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I really think that the dual sport marketplace is written off by a lot of beginners because they're these utilitarian motorcycles. But, you know, they're just the most fun. Yeah. Out of all the little bikes, I mean, the Ninja 400 is really great because you can do a lot of cool track stuff with it. But yeah. if you're thinking about mostly just being a street rider and, you know, maybe you want to go explore off-road a little bit, a dual sport is absolutely the way to go. I think one of the, as you said, benefits of the Jixer versus the WR, it does have a nicer dash, there is no doubt about that. It has a much larger gas tank so you can go a longer distance with it. Um, it makes an atrocious sound, so that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it has plastics, which some people like that look. Yeah, some people do want to be perceived of being on a sport bike, and that's fine, you know, so there's that. Um, one other thing I noticed as well is uh, WR250R has fully adjustable suspension front and rear, which is not something you're going to find on beginner bikes. No. Um, you're really not going to find that. So this is a bike that has these absolute tiny little, you know, baby's first mountain bike front forks on it. I think these are like <laughs> 20 millimeter forks. They're insanely small. I think you measured them the other day, right? They were like 32? 35. 30, 35 mil forks. Uh, Non-adjustable. All you can do is adjust preload in the rear so you can get your sag right. But on the WR, you can dial it in however you want. So that's a bike you can grow with over time versus this thing where, uh, honestly, if you buy a Jixxer 250, you're probably going to keep it for like six months and then get something else. Honestly. Yeah. And you're not going to get any money out of it. You're not oh. going to get any money because nobody wants one. Yeah, it's probably going to be hard to sell because no one wants it. Alrighty, Spite, what do you say we jump off these bikes now that we've experienced them both and wrap this video up.
All right, everyone, we're wrapping the day up here with the Jixxer 250 and the WR250, two very different motorcycles, but sharing the same displacement. Spite, do you feel like they have anything in common? No, aside from their displacement, they really don't. Yeah. Uh, this motorcycle is above and beyond good. This thing is just, it has no reason to be. It just yeah. should not exist. Yeah, because when you look at competitors to the WR, it falls very closely in line and actually provides something in that marketplace, right? Yes. Versus a KLX 300, it's got better features. Versus a DRZ, it has fuel injection, right? Yep. So it actually competes a little bit. I think the Jixxer falls short in basically every way compared to the other bikes in its segment. You look at yeah. Ninja 400, R3, this thing has nothing good about it. No. It has nothing to offer aside from a stupidly low price. Yeah and stupidly low horsepower, yeah. I mean, that's it. It also puts up with kicks quite nicely. It just kind of does pretty pretty well with kicks. So I don't know about Ninja 400s, but this is a very kickable motorcycle. You wouldn't want to kick your Ninja 400. You'd want to treat it a little bit nicer. You wouldn't, yeah. Again, this is why we bought this thing as a bit of a meme, because it is a meme. It's really bad. <laughs> um, this is not a good motorcycle, and I struggle to think of why you would actually want to buy one, honestly. I think the only reason people buy it is again because it's cheap it's yeah. re it's an it's a very accessible motorcycle you go to a dealership and you see these bikes on sale all the time because they can't get rid of them bikes like this they can't hold on to them long enough so you nope. you have a hard time finding good deals on bikes like this and ninja 400s and all that stuff these bikes all hold their value incredibly yeah. well super well not yeah. even the people who own it, these jixxer 250s want to keep them no they don't yeah so guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. That's kind of our discussion about these 250cc bikes. The kind of thesis of the video today, wrapping it up here, is if you want a baby sport bike, definitely go above a 250. Don't go for Ninja 250, don't go for Jixxer 250. You will be just fine on a Ninja 400, a Duke 390, R3, that sort of thing. If you wanna stick to a 250 and you really believe in your soul that's the right choice for you, definitely look at a dual sport, man. These bikes are bad ass. We love riding them and they are a ton of fun and just take our word for it. I know you probably look at it and you're like, that's a dirt bike, it's so ugly. It's worth it, trust me, right Spike? It's awesome, it's yeah. really good. You're, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice if you write this whole category off. You should check it out. But anyways, we'll catch you in the next one. Be sure to check out the links below to the yamanoob.co so you can get entered to win $6,000 cash prize or that Triumph Trident if you are a beginner rider. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Hey there, partner. You done made it to the end of this here Yamanoob video, but I tell you what, there's another Yamanoob video right over here waiting for you. Now, I know I'm real gracious like that, and I just do nice things for you. So why don't you take a look at this video, and you let me know what you think.